This week, Supreme Court justices heard a case regarding New York's latest effort to restrict gun ownership. Joining us at this hour to discuss the case is Mark Walters, a spokesperson for the Second Amendment Foundation, as well as a board member for the Citizens Committee on the Right to Keep and Bear Arms. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thanks for having me, Stephanie. I appreciate it very much. New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus the City of New York is a case that was heard by the Supreme Court regarding a law that essentially restricts handgun owners from taking firearms outside of the city for any reason. Can you tell us why this law is so controversial in the first place? Yeah, first of all, the, the case goes back quite a few uh, quite a few years. New York City has what's called a premises license, which in and of itself I would consider to be an infringement on the right to keep and bear arms, requiring individuals that want to take their handgun to one of seven gun ranges in and around New York City, one in each borough, to have to have the premises license, but that's the only place that they can take the gun. Now, if you go back to the 2008 Heller DC case, that dealt specifically primarily with handgun ownership in the home. So the Supreme Court and the gun rights community has been looking for a case to take gun rights, to, to remove it from the home and get it outside the home where you have a right to keep and bear arms. So this case has taken on great importance because it deals with the restrictions that New York City placed on your ability to travel outside the home. For example, if you have a second home uh, outside New York City, you can't take your gun, et cetera. So when the Supreme Court decided to hear the case, New York City does, as most Democrats and gun prohibitionists do, try to skirt the law by fixing the law or putting together a fix, if you will, to make the case moot. And that's where the argument is right now today. Right, so after the court decided to hear the case, New York City officials rushed to change the law in order to derail the case. Why would New York City do this? Because they know that the Supreme Court took this case for probably one reason, and that was to overturn it, Stephanie. The reason being is New York City won the case twice. They won it at the district level and they won it on appeal. Both of those courts found that, it was, that their law was constitutional. When the New York State Pistol and Rifle Association sought cert at the Supreme Court and it was granted, it became pretty obvious at that point that the Supreme Court was going to look seriously at overturning that case. And of course, the gun prohibitionist lobby doesn't want anything to do with that. They're scared of how broad the ruling is and what effect and impact it will have across the country for gun control laws, not just New York State. Now, interestingly enough, former New York City Mayor and now Democrat presidential hopeful Michael Bloomberg released his plans for gun control on Thursday. He's calling for federal red flag laws, a national gun licensing system, and stricter background checks. Yet Bloomberg wrote an op-ed in the Chicago Tribune criticizing the New York City law, saying it posed unnecessary restriction on gun owners. What does this say about Bloomberg? A capital H when you spell the word hypocrite when it comes to Michael Bloomberg. Michael Bloomberg is a very well-known commodity when it comes to the right or the fight for the right to keep and bear arms. Michael Bloomberg is funding probably 80 percent of the gun prohibitionist lobby right now out of his pocket with every town for gun safety and others. So it's it's not it's not unheard of. We it's exactly what we would have expect, expected from Michael Bloomberg. Not nothing shocking there. Now, going back, the court is still able to dismiss the case, but they did hear from the challengers and they may decide to take up the case. What does this particular case say about the current state of the Second Amendment in the country? It's a constant fight. We're under vicious attack. There are enemies of the Second Amendment who are very well funded by Michael Bloomberg, who has an unlimited pocketbook. He's got very deep pockets as a multi-billionaire, and he has pledged hundreds of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars to fight against Americans' right to keep and bear arms. This New York case is very important. My opinion is that the court will not moot the case, that they will, in fact, render a decision on it in June. And if they do, I believe it'll be a 5-4 decision in our favor, with Roberts more than likely being the swing vote in this case. So it's, it has a huge impact. It's very important. Absolutely. And we'll have to see how this even impacts Bloomberg and other presidential candidates heading into 2020. Mark Walters, thank you so much again. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One America News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One America News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.